What's up guys, today's video is a haul video. I do these about once a month and in them I share all of the different products that came in throughout the week, whether it was PR or things that I purchased myself. And in these videos, I basically turn the camera around and focus on the products themselves and we do swatches and unboxings and it really gives you a good look at what's actually new in the makeup world. And then at the end of the video, I'll be sure to let you know my thoughts on whatever products I ended up trying out throughout the week. So it's sort of like part haul video and part mini reviews. So if that sounds good to you, I hope you will stick around. And if you're new here and you like unsponsored makeup content, be sure to hit that subscribe button and let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. And I'll meet you guys back here at the end. Good morning guys. It's Monday and I just got a couple of PR packages in the mail over the weekend that I wanted to share with you. I got one from Milani and also one from Lawless. So um, in the Milani one, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. They have brand new colors of their eyeshadow sticks. I know that they came out with a few like a while back. They had a certain collection where they had a couple of shades, but now they have eight shades. And then um, on the other side here, we have new lipsticks. They're called the Stay Put Liquid Lips. So they sent me all the colors and we'll definitely be able to do some swatches and I'll let you guys know how the formula is at the end of the video. And then um, from Lawless, I got the Forget the Filler Balm Stick, which I also saw at Sephora and I'm really excited because I love their Forget the Filler gloss. So in here we have six shades and they all look really beautiful. They also sent over uh, the lip mask and one of the glosses as well. So we're definitely going to be opening all of these up and checking them out. So why don't we go upstairs under my ring light and we'll do some swatches. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the Lawless Lip Balms first. And these are not the type of a lip plumper that's going to sting or burn your lips. It does have a little bit of a tingle, but the ingredient in here is Maxi Lip. And Maxi Lip in vitro is supposed to increase the collagen synthesis by 351%, increase lip volume by 40%, improve hydration by 60%, and then reduce lip folds by 29%. So Maxi Lip is in a lot of lip products these days, and it's something that works not only immediately but over time which I really like so um, I figured we could just swatch all the colors really quick and I'm absolutely going to be trying these this week and I can let you know at the end of the video what my thoughts are on them so let me just take everything out and we'll get started all right so here's a look at the packaging they come in beautiful rose gold tubes and when you open them up the bullet is the flat style bullet kind of similar to like any other tinted lip balm so the first shade is Baby Doll, and these are supposed to be more on the sheer side. So I'm just going to kind of layer them up a little bit. This one is Posy, and here's what it looks like in the tube. Next we have Pink Marshmallow, which I think is probably going to show up completely clear, but let's see. Yeah, this one really doesn't have any color to it at all. So that's a great option if you don't actually want to wear a lip color, but you still want the lip plumping benefits. Then we have Lover, which looks like kind of a more of a brick red in the tube. But in the swatch, it actually comes out a little bit more of like a berry pink. So it looks quite different in a swatch than it does in the tube. This one is Georgie, which is more of a peachy nude. And this one is also really pretty. And last but not least, we have Sugar Plum, which is the darkest shade in the tube. But let's see what it looks like swatched. This is actually kind of like a black cherry sort of a color, almost like um, Clinique's Black Honey. Very similar. These are very, very sheer. You're not going to get a ton of pigmentation out of them, but they feel like a nice melty texture. They feel very hydrating. So I'll be sure to let you guys know at the end of the video what my thoughts are. All right, so next let's check out the Milani Gilded Eyeshadow Sticks. So I just pulled out the sheet just to tell you um, what they say about them. So it says that these are pigment rich, ultra creamy, that they glide on seamlessly without tugging, and it's crease proof, waterproof, and lasts up to 12 hours. They also say you can use them as liners, eyeshadows, or as a base for powder shadows, but to immediately blend out the edges. And also down here, it says find it first at Ulta Beauty. So I guess they're an Ulta exclusive. They're cruelty free, vegan, and made in the US. All right, so let's go ahead and do some swatches. So just a quick look at the packaging. These are just a retractable eyeshadow stick, very similar looking to like the Laura Mercier sticks. So the first shade is Blossom and oh wow, these are super creamy and like a really thin formula. I hardly even had to put any pressure on it at all. Then shade number two is Rose. So even though this is Rose, it almost looks kind of a little bit more on the peachy side. Not quite the color that I was expecting, but it's still really beautiful. It's almost like a rosy copper shade. Then shade number three is sand, and this one is almost like a golden taupe. It's not a super yellowy gold, so it definitely has a little bit more of like a neutral 
taupey undertone. Then we have shade number four, Desert. So this one is definitely more of a yellow gold shade. Really beautiful as well. This one is very warm toned. Shade five is Sterling, which normally you would think of as gray, but this one is actually like a grayish green. It sort of has like a sagey tone to it. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Then shade six is Lily. So this one is kind of like a plummy color, but it's almost like a plummy gray. So it's definitely a bit more on the muted side. All right, and then shade number seven is Moss. So this one and Lily before it have a little bit more of a satin finish while the others are more metallic. And then shade number eight is Terra. This one looks like it also has just the satiny finish. And this is a deeper brown shade. All right, so there are all the colors one through eight. I'm super excited to use these. I've really been into eyeshadow sticks lately. I've been using the Sephora collection ones that I talked about in a video a while back. And I use them so often now just as like everyday shadows. And I'm just so excited for these. I think these colors look so gorgeous. All right, so next up we have the Stay Put Liquid Lip. And I'm not normally a big fan of liquid lipsticks because I always find them to be too dry. These are supposed to be non-drying. So hopefully they're good. It says um, that these glide on smoothly with an airy lightweight feel and they're supposed to have 12 hours of transfer proof soft focus matte wear it also says to remove them with an oil-based cleanser so there's 12 shades these say that they're only at walmart cruelty free paraben free and made in italy it does not say that these aren't vegan so i just wanted to point that out really quick and i think i'm going to go ahead and swatch these on my hand i know that the arm is ideal but usually with more long wearing lip products like this it'll stain my arm for days and then i won't be able to swatch anything else so for some reason they just wash off easier on my hand i don't know why all right so first we have the shade 110 glow up and this one is a soft light pink that is really pretty. Next up is shade 120, 10 out of 10. This one, oh my gosh, a gorgeous pinky nude. It's like the your lips but better type of color. I love that one. Then we have shade 130, iconic. And this one is kind of like a mauvey pink. So I really like this one too. I could definitely see myself wearing that one a lot. Then we have shade 140, The Moment, which is a brighter pink. It's kind of like a deeper version of the first shade. And by the way, these don't have any scent to them at all. Shade 150 is Snatched. And this one is a really beautiful deeper pink. Shade 160 is Vibe. So this one is kind of like a beautiful rust color. I actually really like this too. I think that would be so pretty in the fall. Shade 170 is Unhinged. <laughs> I don't know if I love the name of that. That's not something that you want to be. <laughs> um, but this is a really kind of like bright pinky red. It's not quite red. It's almost like a rosy red. Shade 180 is Main Character. And this one is actually very similar to the last one. It's maybe just slightly more pink. A little bit brighter. Shade 190 is We Stan. So this one is kind of like a deeper brick color. It's kind of like this one, but it has a little bit more orange behind it, almost like a terracotta. Shade 200 is That Girl. So this is a bright orangey red. That's a beautiful color as well. Shade 210 is Red Flag. And I ran out of room on my hand, so I'm just putting this on my arm. So this one is like a brighter more true red. Shade 220 is Go Off, and this one is like a deep wine color. So there are all your shades in order. These do really seem to have a very thin and weightless feel, so I'm excited to try them. Every time I try a liquid lipstick, I always hope that it's the one that I can actually wear that doesn't make my lips look dry, so I'll let you guys know at the end of the video what my thoughts are. What's up guys, it's Tuesday and I just got a box from Kopari and it has a ton of sunscreen in it, which I'm really excited about. I've never tried their sunscreen before, but I have seen these glowy ones all over TikTok. So I'm definitely excited to try these out. Their body butter is like my all time favorite body butter. And it looks like they actually sent me a little travel tube of it too, which is awesome. So why don't we go ahead, I'll just open all of these up and we'll take a quick look. All right, so according to what they sent on the card, there are a couple different formulations. The shimmery ones are for the body, the rose gold, is SPF 45 and the gold one is SPF 50. I'm not sure why they're different. Um, then we have the soft radiant glow SPF 30 for the face and also the transparent sheer mineral formula which is SPF 30 and that one is also for the face. All right so first let's check out the shimmery ones. I'm so excited for these. So these are a chemical blend so I'll show you guys just quickly what the sunscreen ingredients are in case you have any allergies or anything like that. And this says that it's a sheer lightweight body gel packed 
packed with moisturizing oils and nourishing vitamins. So I'm just gonna shake it up quick and we'll see what it looks like. All right, so it is kind of more like a gel, but as you blend it, yeah, it definitely feels more like an oil when you blend it out, just like a regular oil sunscreen. It smells incredible, like all of Kopari's products. It has like a really beachy, coconutty kind of scent to it. And I don't know that I necessarily see any color from the rose gold. It just gives my skin like this really beautiful glow. Next up, we have the gold one. I'm just curious to see if this one looks any different on the skin than the rose gold. I'm doubting it because like I said, I don't really see any of the rose gold color from the shimmer. They pretty much just seem to go on completely clear, which is fine. But I think if you want the little bit of extra SPF that's in this one, then go for the gold one. All right, then next up we have the Sun Shield Soft Glow Daily Face SPF 30. This one says that it smooths the skin's appearance with a sheer weightless satin finish that vitamin E shields the skin from free radicals, while ethically sourced pearlescent minerals illuminate the skin, leaving you with a protected, subtle, radiant glow. By the way, these are all made in the United States, and here's the mix of sunscreens on this formula. All right, I'm just gonna put this one over on this hand here so we can see how pearly and glowy it really is. So let's check it out. I do really love the new e.l.f. sunscreen. I think it's awesome, but this is a completely different texture than that. Okay, so this one has kind of like a dry feel. It reminds me of the texture of the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. It's super lightweight, super silky. It has um, kind of like a velvet feel, almost like a primer would have. So I can see how it definitely would smooth out the skin. I don't really notice a lot of glow. It has sort of, um, I would say a satin finish. It's not like the e.l.f. one that's like really glowy and glittery under makeup. This isn't gonna show like that, but I think this is just a beautiful base to put your makeup on top of because it just really smooths out the look of the skin. Like you can see the difference here. This one obviously still has the oil on it, but you can definitely see more texture on the hand with the oil. And this one just looks a lot more smoothed out. So that is actually really, really nice. I'm definitely gonna be using that. Then we have the mineral SPF. So this is great if chemical sunscreens break you out. I know some do for me, so I'm definitely gonna have to kind of use this for a while and see if it's okay because there have been some sunscreens, Neutrogena in particular, that completely broke me out. So this has um, non-nano mineral zinc, hyaluronic acid, raspberry seed oil, rice bran extract. So it's almost like skincare. So this is at zinc oxide 14.14%. .14%. This is also the only one that's reef safe because it's a mineral formula. If you're swimming in the ocean, these might not be the best. It might be better for pools. And whenever it comes to mineral sunscreen, sometimes they can leave a white cast on the skin, which is why a lot of people aren't crazy about them, but I feel like they've come a really long way. So I wanna see what this one looks like on. I'm just gonna put a little bit of it here. It does come out white out of the bottle. It doesn't have a tint to it. And yeah, this is what they usually look like when you start blending them, but hopefully that white cast sort of disappears. Let's see. This one has a really hydrating feel, kind of like a moisturizer. It feels really nice. And yeah, as you rub it in, I definitely think the white cast goes away. Um, just looking at my two hands side by side, I don't really see a huge difference between them, maybe just slightly. Um, but anyway, guys, what do you think? Have you tried any of these? I'd love to hear what your favorite SPFs are. I actually forgot to mention that the two face sunscreens don't have any scent while the body ones do. So just wanted to mention that as well. Hey guys, it's a little bit later on Tuesday and I just got some more things in the mail. I got some things that I ordered from Amazon and also I got my Tarte order and last week they were having like a buy four things, get them 50% off. So I ended up choosing four things that I've really been wanting. These three, um, actually the blushes and the lip product. I already have these in other colors, but these were just colors that I really wanted wanted to try next. And then I also got this body bronzer, which I thought looked really interesting. I'm not a big um, self tanner kind of a person. I always just feel like it ends up looking streaky and patchy on me. So I like to use body bronzers that'll wash off at the end of the day. And this one says that it's waterproof and it looked really good. Um, from Amazon, I got this makeup bag that I saw on Jessica Braun's channel and it looks so good for travel. It fits so many things. And then I also noticed that Kiko Milano has oh, an Amazon store 
before, which I didn't realize that they were on there. So I got some blush sticks that look absolutely incredible, a contour stick, a lip product. And then this was something that you guys recommended to me, the Sky Organics Castor Oil. It's an eyelash serum and you can also use it on your brows. A few weeks back, I was talking about Grande Brow and how it really worked well for me, but a lot of you were saying castor oil is so much cheaper and it works just as well, if not better. So I'm excited to give that a try as well. So I figured we could take all of this upstairs, do some quick swatches, and I'll show you everything a little bit closer. All right, so I just carried everything up in this makeup bag and I wanna show you why this is so cool. It has this diagonal zipper, which definitely serves a purpose. And this color is beautiful. It comes in tons of different colors and some of them have some print on it, but I just really like this blush pink and it feels really nice and sturdy. It's kind of like a leatherette. Um, so anyway, when you unzip this, this is the best part. Like when you're traveling and it's so hard to find things in your makeup bag, this opens like this, like all the way out. So you can really see what you have. It has two pockets on this side. It has one bigger pocket on this side. Then it has the zipper pouch in the middle for your brushes. And just looking at the difference, like for example, I got this makeup bag on Amazon a while ago, but it's just so hard to see everything in here. It's dark and you're kind of like fumbling around and everything. In here, you can just see everything. It's just all out there. So I think this is a genius idea. When I'm at a hotel, I can just leave it on the sink like this and see everything that I have. So anyway, let's go ahead and do some quick swatches and take a look at some of the products. So I guess we'll just start with Amazon since I'm already talking about it. So I guess we'll just start with the Amazon stuff. So this is the Sky Organics castor oil. And I mean, there's not too much to say about this. I know I did some research after you guys talked about it and people have really seen incredible results. So I just wanted to show you how um, it comes in this dropper style bottle, but they also give you little um, brushes to apply it to your lashes and then also some mascara wands to apply it to your brows. So I think that's really cool. Next, when it comes to the Kiko Milano blush sticks, I already peeked at these. They actually came in boxes and I opened them up already because I wanted to see what the colors looked like. These are so gorgeous. Wait until you see. I'm just gonna move this bag out of the way. All right, so these are called the Velvet Touch Creamy Stick Blush. I wanna say they were like around 10 or $11 each and they're made in Italy. So I wanna show you the colors. Like look at this one. It's that bright pink that everybody is talking about. This is shade number four. So I'm just gonna do some swatches on my arm. Look at the pigmentation of that. Oh my goodness. <gasps> that is so beautiful. And it does have a really nice velvety feel. It doesn't feel like it's gonna be sticky. I love this already. Okay, let's see what the other colors look like. All right, this one is shade seven. So this one looks like kind of more of a dusty pink. Equally as beautiful, honestly. Look at how gorgeous. Next up we have shade number two, which is like a light peach. I was trying to get like a variety of colors to try. I just can't get over how pigmented these are. And then shade number five is kind of like a peachy pink. Let's see. Actually, yeah, it's like a coral. Wow, these are all beautiful. I would definitely wear every single one of these colors. I'm probably most excited about the hot pink, but I'll definitely wear all of these. These are so pretty. And the contour stick that I got is also part of that sculpting touch line. So this is the creamy stick contour and I got the shade 200. This one is also made in Italy. So I'm really hoping this color is good. Oh yeah, it does look very cool toned. Let's do a swatch. Okay, so this one, yeah, I mean, it's cooler tone, but it's a little bit kind of on the yellowy side. It's not my favorite shade for contour. I like something a little bit more gray. So I'm really not crazy about the color of this one. The formula feels really nice though. I should check and see what other colors they have. There might be one that just works better for me. And then the lip product I got from Kiko is the Jelly Stylo, Stilo, I don't know how you say that. Um, this is in the shade Rosetto, it's 510. And this is also made in Italy. So I love the packaging. This looks really kind of high end. It's very heavy. And I thought this color looked kind of like it would be a Clinique Black Honey type of dupe. So let's see. I'm just gonna put it here. Oh wow, this is so creamy. It's actually melting on contact with my skin right now. <laughs> the formula feels kind of similar to like the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips or the Revlon Glass Shine lipsticks that went viral. 
I don't know about this color. It's more pigmented than I was expecting. Usually when I see a color like this and it's a balm, I'm thinking it's going to be more sheer, but that's actually a lot of color. So we'll have to see how this works out. I might have to choose something a little bit lighter. All right, so let's check out the things that I got from Tarte. First, I got another color of the Maneater Blush and Glow. I love these so much. I got the shade Coral. I already have pink, which is like a light baby pink color, and I have raspberry. And this formula is just so nice. It has a little hint of glow, but it's not overly glitter or sparkly. So as long as they were doing 50% off, I wanted to try another shade. So here's what Coral looks like. These have kind of a serum-like texture. They're really lightweight and really blendable. So that's what it looks like unblended. And then I'll just blend it out a little bit so you guys can see. This is a gorgeous color, perfect for my skin tone. I think this is going to be awesome for summer. I also got one of their Amazonian clay blushes. I love this formula. I have tons of them already, but I really wanted the shade Party or Party for the longest time. Um, it just looks like such a beautiful light pink, kind of like a nude pink. So here's the outer packaging. And yeah, like look at how beautiful that is. All right. I feel like you don't see a lot of blushes that are this color, and I think it's just perfect for like a fair to light skin tone. So let's just swatch it. Oh yeah, like look at how beautiful that is. I really love pale blushes like this if let's say I'm doing like more of a smoky eye and I just wanna keep my cheeks and lips a little bit more neutral. That is so perfect, I love it. And then I got the Maracuja Juicy Lips in the shade Hibiscus, which again looks like more of a cool toned mauvey pink. And I love this formula because it's such a melty texture. Yeah, this color, honestly, this color pairs perfectly with the party shade. Wow. And you can see how shiny this is. It's almost like a lip gloss in a stick. And they do have a little bit of a coconut scent. So I just wanted to mention that in case you don't like scents in your lip products. But yeah, I'm definitely happy with every color that I got. So that's awesome. And then the last thing that I got is the Park Avenue Princess Waterproof Face and Body Bronzer. This is in the light to medium shade. So it says with a large brush, blend it into the skin in circular motions, paying special attention to knees, ankles, and elbows, and layer for a deeper bronze color. But it does say that it's waterproof, which I'm very excited about. So it's a lot bigger than their regular Park Avenue Princess bronzer. I actually have that one so I can show you the difference. So you're definitely getting a ton more product in the body one. Oh, actually it's not that much more. Um, the original one is nine grams and this one is 15.6. Also, I should mention that the smaller one says that it's made in China. This one is made in the United States. All right, so let me show you the color really quick. I feel like this looks pretty good. It looks like it might have a little bit of a rosy undertone, which I'm so happy about. And the brush that I figured I would apply it with is the Sigma Ultimate Bronzer Brush. This is one of my favorite bronzer brushes, but I think I'm probably gonna invest in like, you know, one of those smaller kabuki style brushes that are a little bit firmer. I think those will probably apply more of the product and that's what it showed on the Tarte website that they were using to apply this. I think this one is a little bit more fluffy and it's probably gonna give more of a sheer result but I just want to see what it looks like on so I'm just gonna buff this into this arm I mean this one this brush is still gonna work fine all right so I'm really liking this color a lot I think it's beautiful on my skin tone and it does give your skin just a little hint of a glow so something to keep in mind it's not a flat matte but it's also not sparkly or glittery either and I'll show you what it looks like next to the other arm in just a minute but I feel like this gives me just the perfect amount of bronze without being too deep or too dark all right, so here are my arms side by side. I think this is definitely a really effective bronzer. It did a great job at giving me that beachy glow. So overall, very happy with this so far. Hey guys, it's Wednesday. I just ran over to Walgreens because some of you told me that number seven has a new stick foundation and I noticed that they had a bunch of new products. I don't know if some of these might be repackaged, like the blushes, for example. I don't know if these are their old blushes just in new packaging. It used to be in black packaging and now everything is white. So I don't know if some of these are older products just redone, but I did see some things that I had never seen before, like lip and cheek tint, the hydroluminous um, skin perfector. I figured we could just open all this up, take a quick look, do some swatches, but I'm definitely gonna try everything out this week and hopefully I'll be able to let you know by the end what my thoughts are. So I guess let's try the stick foundation first. I'm so curious about this. I don't always love stick foundations on my skin because they're more of a cream formula. Same thing with a cream foundation that's in a compact. 
Those typically look very heavy and thick on my skin and they're usually the type that really clings to dry patches too. So I don't know how this is gonna be, but I love number seven's foundations. So I figured it was still worth giving it a try. So this is the Stay Perfect foundation in the shade Cool Vanilla. I also love that they have so many cool tone shades in their range. So this is what the color looks like in the stick. It doesn't really say anything on it, so I'm not sure what the claims are, but I figured we could just swatch it and we'll see kind of what it seems like. So the color is, I would say, pretty good for my skin. It doesn't look as yellow as some foundations tend to do. And I'm just gonna kind of blend it out a little. I mean, it does feel like a lot of other stick foundations do. It has that thicker, creamy feel, but it has a very um, powdery dry down to it. So it's not something that I think is gonna be super hydrating, but at the same time, my arm does look really smooth where I put it, so I'm hoping for the best with this one. We'll have to see. By the way, this one says it's made in Italy, packed in China. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Usually they're packed wherever they're made, but anyway. Um, next we have the Hydra Luminous Aqua Release Skin Perfector. This is a tinted moisturizer with eight hour hydration and light coverage. I got the shade medium. I don't think I was intending to get medium. It was probably sitting in the wrong slot on the shelf. Um, but this says that it has aqua release technology to deliver an instant surge of hydration to the skin that lasts throughout the day. It's an ultra lightweight skin perfector that blurs the appearance of fine lines caused by dehydration for a naturally smooth, dewy and luminous finish. All right, so let's see what, yeah, this is definitely gonna be too dark, but, oh, it has a really nice texture. It actually reminds me of the Neutrogena Hydra Boost Hydrating Tint. It feels almost identical to that, or Laura Geller's Quenchin Tint. It feels like it almost turns to water on the skin. Like, look at that. That is so interesting and feels like I'm giving my skin a drink of water. And it does definitely seem to have more of a plumping effect. Like my skin looks really kind of glowy and dewy compared to the other side. Again, I think the color is definitely too dark for me, but luckily it's sheer. So I think I can still make it work, especially in the summertime. So yeah, it doesn't look like it has much coverage, but I'm still really excited to try it. They also have a new concealer in the Hydra Luminous line, which is the same as this one. It says Dark Circle Concealer, and I got the shade number one, which is the lightest shade. This one says that it's made in France, and by the way, so was this one as well. So it has this type of sponge tip applicator, which isn't my favorite. Usually these are too stiff to actually apply the product with, but I usually just put some on the back of my hand and then pick it up with a beauty sponge or a brush or whatever I'm using. So, all right, let's see. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little bit on my hand right here. Yeah, I think this color, I mean, it's pretty light, but I usually like my concealers to be a little bit lighter than my skin tone. And it also has, I, I would say, more of a cool undertone as well. It does have a very lightweight texture, but at the same time, I feel like the coverage is pretty decent on this. It seems like it is. So I'm definitely excited to try it. I mean, it feels hydrating. It looks very smooth on the area where I put it. So I will definitely let you know. Next, let's check out the lip and cheek tints. I I think these look so fun and I love this light pink color. This says it's a lightweight buildable lip and cheek tint, delivers a healthy looking glow and a natural pop of color. These are made in Thailand and they have kind of a little squeezy tube applicator. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on there. And then by the way, this color is called Cherry Blossom and then the deeper pink is called Dusk Pink. So I'm just gonna put this one on as well. Put it over here. Ooh, look at how pretty that one is too. It's kind of like a cooler, almost like a taupey pink. All right, so let's blend these out. Okay, so one thing I'm noticing right away with these, and hopefully they're not sticky, but they kind of have a little bit of an oily feel to them. Like they're very, very, very emollient. I have a feeling this is not the type of formula that's going to dry down on the cheeks at all. I wouldn't say that it feels sticky. It definitely has a very smooth feel, but but because it has that oily texture, I'm a little worried about it kind of moving your foundation underneath. And I don't know, I'm just not loving the texture of these right off the bat. But again, I will try them on my face and I'll be sure to let you know. Next up, we have the two powder blushes. These are called the Matte Powder Blusher and I have Damson Mist and Pomegranate. And both of these say that they're made in Italy. So 
let's take a closer look. All right, so this one is Damson Mist, and oh wow, it definitely looks really pigmented. It feels very soft and silky. So here's what that looks like swatched. Wow, look at how smooth that looks in a swatch. That is beautiful. No patchiness whatsoever, and it looks so smoothing on the skin. That is really nice. All right, so next we have Pomegranate. These almost look like the same color, funny enough. All right, and then there's that one. So yeah, I, that's weird. I don't really notice much difference between these two colors at all, even in a swatch. So I feel like blended out on the cheeks, they're really gonna look the same. These are very, very similar, but the formula seems super nice. And then these lip balms are also part of the Hydra Luminous line. It's weird, but it kind of is all reminding me of Neutrogena's Hydra Boost line. It all seems to have a pretty similar uh, concept. So these are called the Hydra Luminous Lip Balm, okay? Um, these are made in Italy and I have the shades nude and blush. So these have just the flat style bullet like a lot of tinted lip balms do and I guess I'm just gonna put this one on my hand. So this is nude. There's really not much pigmentation at all. Um, they're very very sheer. And then this one is pink which is kind of a brighter cool tone pink. I actually really like this. It's so hard to find cool tone colors. I feel like everything kind of pulls warm for the most part. So I really like that a lot. So anyway, that's my number seven haul from Walgreens. I'm gonna start testing these out and hopefully I'll have some more info for you guys by the end of the video. Hey guys, it's Friday. I thought I would do a little summer clothing haul really quick. I know I normally just talk about makeup on my channel, but every once in a while I like to show clothing because I'm a size eight medium and I don't see a lot of other creators that are that size sharing clothing try-ons. So I just felt like it might be helpful for those of you who are also size mediums. So I have some things from Pink Lily and I also have some things from Airy. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. Okay, so first up from Pink Lily, we have this romper. I'm not normally a romper person at all, but I loved the look of this. I thought it was so cute and it's actually a very flattering fit and just a great like one and done outfit instead of wearing a dress. I mean, you have your two pieces right here. You don't have to think about what outfit to put together. So it's just really easy. It also has these tie straps up here so you can adjust them if you wanna like make it a little bit less low cut. You can kind of pull these up. And I also love the watercolor print on this. It is just so beautiful and unique. So. This is really cute. This black romper is also from Pink Lily. And again, I just feel like it's a really flattering shape. The black is really slimming and it would make a great outfit just for, you know, going out to dinner or if you don't want to dress up too much, it's casual yet at the same time, I feel like it could be dressy depending on what shoes you wear with it. So I love this one as well. It's really comfortable and it has like a gauzy material. So it's going to definitely keep you cool in the summertime. Next up, this dress might look familiar. I wore it in a video the other day and a lot of people were complimenting it and saying, they thought it was a top but it's actually the cutest dress it has eyelet pattern on it and it also has shorts underneath I'm not gonna like lift it up but it's like a romper style dress so it has the shorts underneath and then the skirt that goes over it so it is adorable and again really comfy it's a lightweight cotton that definitely is gonna breathe in the summertime so I think this is so cute and I love the color next up this halter top is from pink lily and I love the colors I love the shape of it I think it's super cute and these shorts from air are the most comfortable shorts. I'm not like a huge fan of denim anymore these days because I always feel uncomfortable. I feel like it's always digging in and like just squeezing me. And these are like the most comfortable stretchy shorts. They actually have an elastic waistband in the back so they don't gap or anything and they just fit so well. I also like the length because I feel like they're not super short. So if you're not a fan of traditional denim, I think you would really like these. And this is the same Pink Lily halter top, except in black and white stripes. I just love the silhouette, so I wanted to get it in two colors. And then these are the same airy shorts, except they're the shorter version. So the other ones I had were just slightly longer. These are shorter and they still have the elastic in the back. They're still super, super comfortable. So I'm just loving these shorts. I'm so glad I got multiple pairs because they really worked out well. Also, I love this sage green hoodie from Abercrombie. This is the perfect color. It's so soft and pretty and the hoodie itself is really soft and cozy. So I love also the length of it because it's not like a super long sweatshirt. So I think it's going to be great with shorts it's not super cropped either I think it's just a really good length so I love it and these are also the American Eagle shorts in the slightly longer length they're just like a light wash also from Pink Lily, this black bodysuit is so comfy and I love how flattering the neckline is. 
It's beautiful and just kind of dresses up shorts in the summertime. It has these ruffle sleeves. I love this. And if you're not a fan of a bodysuit that snaps like down in the crotch, you can always just tuck it in and don't snap it. That's usually what I do. And it's actually a little less fabric than tucking in a full shirt. So I really like this one. I think it looks a little bit more dressed up. Crochet is also really huge this year. And I love the sweater from Pink Lily with a white tank top underneath. It's a very open, loose knit. And I think it would be awesome as either like a pool cover up or just to throw on when it gets cool at night. I just did like a little front tuck, but here's the length that it actually is so it hits about at the hip maybe a little bit longer I also just wanted to show you this bathing suit quickly that I got from Aerie I'm not going to try it on because I don't feel super comfortable trying on a bathing suit on camera but um, this is so flattering I did try it on and it actually looks really good the bottoms are so stretchy and comfortable they're a little bit more of a high rise but they don't like suck you in to the point where it's uncomfortable but yet they still look really flattering and they have tons of coverage in the back and then the top is actually bra sizing so it's really easy to find your size and I just love this blue color I feel like I'm seeing it everywhere these days it reminds me of that scene in Devil Wears Prada when Anne Hathaway is wearing like the same color blue sweater that was such a classic scene but anyway I guess this color is back this year so anyway that's my entire clothing haul and I'll leave everything linked down below all right guys so let's get into some mini reviews I am wearing a lot of the products in the video today and I definitely have some thoughts and some things that I think are definitely worth it and other things not so much. So let's start out with the Lawless Lip Balm. So I actually really like these a lot. I kind of had a feeling I would because I love the lip mask and the glosses. These are very sheer, so you're not gonna get a ton of color out of them, but I really do love the smoothing effect that these have. I'll put up a before and after picture really quick. In the before, obviously, like my lips have a lot of lines in them, not just around them, but actually on my lips themselves. And they've sort of always been that way and they give them a very dry appearance even when they're not dry. So I like smoothing lip products and I really feel like this did a great job at minimizing a lot of those lines and just making everything look a bit smoother. This was immediately after application and as I wore them throughout the day, I felt like it just got better and better. This was the color Baby Doll, which looked like a bright pink in the tube, but it's actually more of a sheer pink on the lips. So I think these are really great. I think I forgot to mention when I was swatching these before that they do have a little bit of a fruity scent, but it's like barely noticeable. I have to put my nose right up to it to even smell it. And once it's on my lips, I don't smell anything. So it's very, very faint. Let's talk about Milani. So we have these new Stay Put liquid lips. And I have to say, these are pretty comfortable for a liquid lipstick. I normally hate liquid lipsticks with a passion and I stay far away from them. But these have a really thin texture. And when you put them on, they feel sticky for just like a few minutes. Once they dry down though, they really stay in place well unless you're eating. Like I'll show you a picture before and after of the shade, the moment. So I put this one on, I waited maybe like 45 minutes or so, and then I ate lunch. And I really, all I ate was a turkey sandwich. It wasn't anything particularly greasy or oily. And afterwards I did notice that some of the lip product wore away in the middle. So I don't think that these are gonna necessarily last really well through eating and drinking, but when I wasn't eating and drinking, it held up just fine. And one of the things that I liked about it is that it didn't feel uncomfortable. It didn't feel like it was sucking the life and moisture out of my lips as I was wearing it. I really couldn't even tell I was wearing it. I forgot all about it. So in that way, it was good. It did, I think, make my lips look a little bit kind of more wrinkled than I would like. So I'm not still completely sold on these, but if you are a liquid lipstick person and you love this type of formula, I do think it's really, really comfortable and definitely long lasting, but you might see some wear if you are eating. I think my favorite product from Milani would be these eyeshadow sticks. I'm wearing two of them today. The first shade that I used was Moss, and this was that green. It was like a deeper kind of forest green, and it has the satiny finish. And when I put this on my eyes, I was a little bit disappointed in how it blended out, or I should say didn't blend out. It was a little bit harder to blend. Once I put it down, I grabbed a brush. It's the BK Beauty 202 brush, and I tried to blend it like I do with all of my eyeshadow sticks. But this one, I just felt like it dried down really fast, and when 
when I did blend it, it looked a little bit patchy and I had to kind of go back in and add a little more. So I wasn't super happy with the way that this one looked, but then I added the shade Sterling to the top of it. And this was that really pale grayish green. And this one is more of a shimmer shade. It actually has little tiny glitter particles in it. And this one was so creamy. And when I blended it out with my finger, it blended really nicely. So I think there's definitely a difference between the two formulas. I think the more metallic ones just seem to blend a little bit easier while the ones that they're not matte, but they're like kind of a satin. Those take a little bit more to blend, not to mention I think sometimes darker colors in eyeshadow sticks are harder to work with as well. So I see myself using the lighter colors on a more everyday basis, probably just like slicking them on as a one and done type of eyeshadow. You really can just draw these on straight from the tube, pat it with your finger and you're good. So I do really like these and they are incredibly long lasting. They don't crease, they don't budge. So I do recommend the metallic ones. And like I said, I think that the satiny ones just take a little bit of finesse and you have to be willing to kind of work with them a little because they can get patchy. Moving on to some of the number seven products. So I tried the foundation stick two different ways. I tried it the other day and I just put it on and then blended it out with my fingers, which I do with a lot of foundation sticks because they're just supposed to be more of like an easy type of a product. And I wish I had filmed it, but I was short on time and I just needed to get where I was going. So I just did my makeup really quickly and I wasn't happy with how it looked. I felt like kind of like a lot of other foundation sticks or cream foundations. It kind of clung weird to drier areas like my chin or my nose, and it looked a little bit heavy and a little bit more makeup-y. But then today for the video, I tried it again, and this time I blended it with a damp beauty sponge, and I like it so much better. I think it just went on so smoothly. I would say that I applied a decent amount of it, but I just felt like the sponge really blended it, kind of thinned it out so that it's not that thick cream texture quite as much and really helped to push it into the skin. And it just looks so much more natural. If I look close up, it doesn't look like it's clinging. It doesn't look dry at all. And I think that the coverage level is a little bit less when I apply it with a sponge, but it's still really good, like medium coverage. So so with the sponge, I actually really do like this product. I think it really just depends on how you apply it. And unfortunately using it with the sponge kind of takes away from like the ease of use of a stick foundation, because like I said, it's normally a swipe and go kind of a thing for me. And if I have to like wet my sponge and like apply it all over, like it's a little bit more of a process, but on my dry skin, it looks a lot better. And I think using a sponge is definitely a must. I also get really good wear time out of it too. So overall, I think it's a really nice product. If you have a more oily skin type, you might enjoy the velvety finish of this. I think if you're dry like me, I would definitely add a little bit of moisture with a sponge and it'll look a lot better. I also really like the Hydra Luminous Tinted Moisturizer, although it really doesn't give that much coverage at all. And like I said, I did get the wrong color for me. So this one isn't exactly ideal, but you're basically gonna get a tinted moisturizer coverage out of this. You're not even gonna get like a BB cream level. I would say it's a sheer to light and it really doesn't build up that well either. Either. So if you need more coverage, even a light to medium, you're probably not gonna get that out of this one. So just keep it in mind. But I do think that it has a really nice water-like feel. It's very, very hydrating. You could even use this as a base and then apply a different foundation on top if you wanted to, because it really is that sheer. And it does give your skin a very nice layer of hydration. Um, the lip products from number seven, I am wearing the blush color today, which was the pink one. I'm wearing it in the video. And and these are a nice tinted lip balm. I don't feel like they're anything super special. I don't think that they're an overly like thick or cushiony formula like some lip balms are that I really like. They're a little bit on the thinner side. They do feel hydrating, but I don't know. It just feels like kind of a very average tinted lip balm. So unless there's like a particular color that you think is amazing that you wanna try, I don't know if it's necessarily something that you have to run right out and buy. Like I said, it's nice, but it's not making me super excited or anything. Um, next we have the lip and cheek tint from number seven, and these were not my favorite at all. These definitely, like I said, when I was swatching them, they have a really oily type of texture. And I feel like they kind of make whatever foundation is on underneath separate a little bit. They don't really dry down on your cheeks. They take a long 
time and they're very, very sheer. There's just so many other cream blushes that I prefer over this one. I love the new Juvia's Place ones, Rare Beauty. Um, Milani has an awesome cream blush formula, even LA Colors at the dollar store. I really love their liquid blushes or the NYX ones. I just don't feel like these are for me. If you like a really dewy cheek and you wear very minimal makeup, then you might like this product. But if you prefer something that dries down all the way, I don't see you liking this one. However, the Kiko blush sticks, incredible. I'm so happy that I got these. I was a little hesitant because I ended up going and buying four colors and I thought if I don't like these, this is a huge waste of money. But I am wearing shade number four today. I'll show you what it looks like applying it. And oh my gosh, this formula is perfection. It has just the right amount of pigmentation. You can blend them with your fingers. I chose to do it with a sponge today, but on a different day when I wore this shade, I blended it with my fingers and it worked just as well. They have that really velvety dry down, yet they still give you time to work them into your skin. And they're definitely that cream to powder formula that I love. So they're not gonna budge or go anywhere. And they're so lightweight. They just blend effortlessly on your cheeks and they don't disturb your foundation underneath. So I absolutely love these. I would say these are probably my favorite product of the video today and the thing that I'm the most excited to use. I think you'll love them. So definitely check these out. I didn't try the contour stick this week. Oh, I did try the lip product because I wanted to see what this color looked like on me. And it's it looks a little bit gothy, to be honest with you. It has a little bit more pigmentation than I was hoping that it would. I don't know. I could probably apply it in a super light layer and try to sheer it out. And that might be a little bit better. I was also very impressed with the Tarte bronzer. I put it all over one day just to try it out. And later that evening, I was washing my face at the sink, just taking all my makeup off. And inevitably, as I'm splashing water like this, it's running down my arms. And I was like, oh shoot, I still have the bronzer on my arms. This is gonna just make a mess and run everywhere. After I patted my face dry with the towel, and by the way, I have white towels, um, I looked at my arm and the drips hadn't left any kinds of streaks in the bronzer, which I was like, okay, that that I wasn't expecting that. And then my arms were still a little bit damp. So I took the towel and I just like patted them dry. Nothing came off on the towel, which I was like, wow. I mean, I was planning to wash them anyway. So I figured if I get bronzer on them, whatever, I'll just bleach them. Nothing came off. Now, granted, I didn't rub with the towel like this. Like I said, I just kind of patted it dry, but any other makeup that I would be wearing, even if I pat it with a towel, it's still going to come off. So I think this is definitely an option if you put it all over and, you know, not that you can jump in a pool with it necessarily, but if you're out in the heat and you're sweating or it's humid, I really don't think it's going to go anywhere or rub off on your clothes either. So I think this is going to be a great alternative to self tanner for me this year. Anyway, guys, that's all I have. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And I would love to hear your thoughts on all the products down below. Have you tried any of these or are you planning to? I'd love to hear your thoughts as always. And I want to thank you for sitting down and watching today's video. If you made it this far, especially a big thank you. The longer people watch, the more YouTube will share my video. So it's truly appreciated. Also, if you have a little bit of extra time and you'd like to check out another video, I'll go ahead and just put a playlist right up here and you can check that out next. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you all in my next video. Take care guys. Bye.